Ducati Diavel. Back in 2009, for some reason, Ducati decided that what the world really needed was a 1198cc V-twin muscle cruiser thing styled like a drag bike with a rear tire wider than a house. Ducati really hit the nail on the head. They, they built this thing, they started with the 1198cc engine out of the superbike, detuned it, got a load more torque in it, made it more suitable for a road bike. Then they got a 240 section rear tire. I think they just kind of handed it to the engineers and said, make that work, good luck. Um, but they did, you know, they fought through it. They started with the form, then they made the function come after. And they came up with a bike that, you know, was great fun in all situations. I've ridden them across Europe. I've ridden around the Nürburgring on them. I've done track days on them. And every time you get on one, it, it just makes you laugh that you could out drag pretty much anything off the line and then out stop it again at the other end. With that low center of gravity and the long wheelbase, then you weren't constantly wheeling and the thing would just drive and fire off into the distance, which made it even funnier when someone pulled up next to you on a superbike. 2014, we're five or so years now into Ducati Diavolness, and Ducati decided it's time for an update. So, as with all these things, they fly a load of us lucky journalists out to some horrible place. I think Monte Carlo, this one's called. Seems to be tons of silly red Ferraris about. They give us a big press presentation and show off what they've done. So in the presentation about this, I made a load of notes. Um, someone vandalized my notes. I don't know if you can see that. There's some lady parts drawn on there. Um, so we won't bother with them. But what they've changed for the bike this year, the biggest thing they've done is they've used the updated version of the engine. So it's now a twin spark motor. So in each cylinder, there are two spark plugs. So there's four in total on a two cylinder bike. And a few changes, things like fueling, jetting, like adjustments to where the injector sprays the fuel, lots of little technical changes. Try and make the bike fuel a bit better, get those big cylinders burning cleaner. Obviously part of that's for emissions and future future-proofing it against Euro 5, 6 and 7 emissions laws. But a lot of it is also makes the bike nicer to ride. Just smooths out that throttle response at the bottom end, makes it pick up better. All that boring techie stuff, the best thing is it's got more torque. Other changes, new colours, white stripes like this one, very nice. New risers on the handlebars, a few little styling tweaks, like bigger side scoops on the radiator, new exhaust, new wheels on it as well. So lots of smaller changes they've, they've done. If you weren't a Diavel nerd, you probably wouldn't tell them apart just seeing them in the street. But if you park them next to each other, there's a lot of clear differences. The front end of the bike, the face of it, this one's got a full LED headlamp now. The other thing they've done is they've had a little nod towards practicality. I think they've realized that a lot of the owners are are using their Diavels a lot, doing a lot of miles on them. There's now a fuel gauge on the Diavel with five bars and then it flashes up and tells you when you're going to be pushing sometime soon. Little side stand light on the dash and the seat, they've made the seat a bit bigger. So hopefully be a bit more comfy as well. So the, the real test is getting out on the mountain and uh, giving the Diavel a bit of a ride, seeing if these changes have made any difference. pleasing thing to say, it's made a huge difference. You know, the minute you get out on the road, ridden an old Diablo, you'll get on the new one and go, ooh, that's better. You know, the engine changes that they've done, the improvements to the bottom end power, the improvements to the fueling, making it smoother, it's the first thing you notice when you get on the bike. From riding out of a town, as soon as you get in the mountains, anywhere you are, that, that crisp fueling and that smoother drive off the throttle is immediately welcome. It's still not going to be as smooth as a four-cylinder superbike or you know, a more refined engine. The V-twin engine, you know, it's a big, powerful, lumpy engine. You're never gonna get that silky smooth, which is, you know, why people like them. You've got to have that drive, you've got to have that character, but it's just a lot more usable than the old one.
So on today's ride, we probably did about 100 miles, maybe 120 miles in total, up and around the mountains, cruising in traffic, cruising in town, and then running like idiots up and down the hills. Um, fair bit of time spent in the saddle, and the, the new seat is, it's not more comfortable as such than the old seat, in terms of if you sat plonked on the seat in the same place, your bum does go numb after you know, an hour and a half, two hours, especially if you're, you're not on the lanes, you know, you just sat on a motorway. The difference now is you've got a bit more room, so you can slide around, find another bit of foam, sit on another bit of your bum, and it stays comfortable. And if you've got a massive fat bum, you're fit. Brilliant. So, in Monaco, it's a place filled with fancy cars, fancy women, fancy bikes. It'd be quite easy to blend in on most stuff. It's not easy to blend in on the Diavel. I don't think it would have been easy on the old Diavel either, to be honest. You know, everywhere you go with this bike, it's got a loud, powerful exhaust note. People turn around to see what's coming, and then as they see it, they're staring all the way past. The improvements they've made to it, the LED headlight, you know, the little tweaks to the styling, they definitely make it look better. It just looks like a more refined product, a more expensive product. You know, kind of typical of a company that's now got a big hand in with Audi. That kind of high-end, high-value product that looks expensive. It is fairly expensive, you know, it's a 15-odd grand bike, but it looks as flash as the two million pound supercars that we've been rolling around with all day. And that says a lot for it. Diablo's a stunning looking bike and it's got a lot of visual impact as standard but some people are never happy so they've got a huge catalogue of all sorts of accessories for this thing. Particular favourites of mine are the black ceramic coated exhaust system, like 1500 pounds or something, but a full termogeni, termogeni, termioni, termiogeni, termi, you know that carbon fibre Italian fancy exhaust that they put on them. The termies, as we would all actually call them. And perhaps the most ridiculous are the CNC machine bling wheels. They are lighter, I'll give them that, but I'm not convinced by the little drillings around the edge of the rim. That's a little bit too bling for me, but I'm sure there are plenty of footballers out there who will snap up the opportunity to get a set of them on. So you'll notice I'm grinning my head off and, and laughing and you know, blowing smoke up the tailpipe of this bike. It is a fantastic bike and that's why. Yeah, there are some gripes. I think the gearbox is sometimes a little bit stiff. Um, the test bikes we rode today were about 100 kilometers old when we got on them. So, and I have to say throughout the day, that did improve. So you know, maybe with a few miles on, that'll go away. It isn't a sports bike, so I'm not gonna sit here and criticize the fact that the foot pegs hit the floor when you fling it into a corner. If you want something that goes around the corner with your elbow on the deck, buy a Panigale, buy a Fireblade. It, for what it is, it corners better than it should. Other gripes, maybe the price. Maybe that's what you have to pay for something this flash with this much brushed aluminium and anodizing on it. But for me, over 15 grand is uh, a tough pill to swallow. Right, and at the end of a long, long day, mucking around on the mountains, doing skids and wheelies and waving at everyone and trying to goad sports cars into races, I've come to the conclusion that Ducati's still great. You know, the Diavel last year was brilliant, the Diavel this year, with the changes, is still brilliant. If you're a sports bikes guy, if you're a pure sports bike guy, you're probably not gonna like the Diavel, but if you're someone who's, you know, a bit open-minded, maybe into something different, it could be the bike that turns you. Uh, it's got the power, it's got good handling, not sports bike handling, but good handling. And most importantly, it puts a grin on your face every time you ride it. The new engine is definitely an improvement. That's probably the biggest thing over the old bike. But any bike that makes you smile just at the thought of riding to the chip shop on it, you know, to the local shop, to you see your mum for the weekend, you know, every time you get out on this bike, you'll be laughing like a maniac, whether you're drag racing, trying to scrape the foot pegs around the corners, or just plodding along in the sunshine.